Welcome to Curatorial Clips, short videos by the curators at the Freyland Museum of Art and faculty colleagues on works in the collection or areas of our expertise. I'm Laura Minton, my pronouns are she, her, and I am the curator of exhibitions at the Freyland Museum of Art. The Freyland Museum of Art and the University of Virginia stand on the territory and homelands of the Monacan Nation. This curatorial clip gives a brief look at the topic of intaglio prints using several examples from the Freyland's permanent collection. The Freyland holds more than 13,000 objects in its collection, and more than half of these are works of art on paper, meaning prints, drawings, collages, photographs, and beyond. These works are not just studies or artistic experiments, but works in their own right. Today, I will be talking specifically about intaglio prints and the various printmaking processes that fall under this umbrella. So to begin, what is a print? A print is an artwork that is made using a process that allows it to be multiplied. Essentially, prints exist in multiple, but this aspect usually garners some confusion or question about their originality. Printmaking results in artworks that are not realizable using any other process. The artists who use these techniques use them deliberately. There are many processes available to printmakers. You may have heard of some already, including woodcuts, etchings, lithographs, or screen prints. Yet many more exist, and artists often combine techniques in a single artwork. When you talk about prints, individual prints are not called copies. This is incorrect. They are called impressions. Intaglio is a class of printing that includes engraving, etching, dry point, mezzotint, and aquatint. In intaglio printmaking, a design is incised upon a metal plate that is usually made of copper, but not always, and is about one to two millimeters thick. The ways that the incisions are made on the plate distinguishes the different processes in the intaglio printing family. However, no matter how the lines are grooved into the plate, the actual printing method is the same. The intaglio plates are inked and then wiped clean so that ink is left in the incisions, which are cuts in the metal that are below the surface of the metal plate. The plate is then printed using a press and a lot of pressure so that the dampened sheet of paper is forced by that pressure into the incised grooves to pull out the ink. Thus, the ink from the plate is transferred to the sheet of paper. Engraving is the oldest of the intaglio processes. To make an engraving, a tool with a V-shaped blade called the burin is used. You can see these circled in red. The burin is held in the palm of your hand and pushed forward, cutting a clean V-shaped groove from the copper. As you push the tool, a thin curl of copper spirals off of the incision. Engraving requires great skill and practice, and it is difficult to fix errors on the plate. A hallmark of the engraved line is that they swell slightly after their more narrow and tapered beginnings and endings. Historically, engraving has been used since antiquity to decorate metal objects. However, engraved plates to make prints did not occur prior to the 15th century. The earliest impressions are German, and the medium gained further popularity and complexity when it was taken up in the 1470s by painters like Martin Schongauer. Albrecht Dürer is one of the most well-known European printmakers and worked prolifically in woodcut and engraving. In the engraving coat of arms with a skull, we see the theme of the memento mori reimagined by Dürer. Memento mori is a Latin phrase translating to, remember that you must die. This is a reminder and reflection upon the transient nature of life on earth. The woman portrayed here can be identified by her crown as a bride. The person embracing her is the traditional German folkloric figure of the wild man. The wild man holds a shield, which is not visible to the young woman, and shows a skull canted in the same angle as the woman's head, a symbol and reminder of death. Next up, we have the technique of mezzotint, the only printmaking process in which the artist is working from dark to light. First, the plate is systematically roughened across its surface using a spike tool called a rocker, circled in red in this image. If a print were pulled from the plate at this point in the process, it would be a rich and velvety black. The artist then uses a burnisher or scraper to smooth out the roughened parts of the plate to form their composition. The burnished areas are lighter and hold less ink.
Mesotints are laborious to produce, but can achieve a high level of dramatic contrast, as you can see in this example by the English Romantic artist John Martin, who was active as a painter and printmaker during the 19th century. The first mesotints were produced in Europe in the mid-17th century and were particularly prized for the medium's ability to translate paintings into printed form. Mesotints were also popular for reproducing portraits, and we have many examples of these at the Fralin in the Langhorne collection of 18th century prints. This print by John Martin comes from his series of mesotints commissioned by the publisher Septimus Prowett for a new edition of John Milton's Paradise Lost. The mesotints were sold to subscribers in stages between 1825 and 1827, and they were a commercial success. This print illustrates the story of the creation of light from Book 7, line 339. The mesotint process, which moves from dark to light, is particularly apt for the subject of this work. Etching is an important and widely used intaglio technique. Essentially, the artist uses acid to incise their image onto the metal plate rather than cutting into the plate directly using a tool such as a burin in engraving. First, the plate is coated with a waxy and acid-resistant substance called a ground. After the ground is dried, the artist can use an etching needle, circled in red, to draw their composition through the ground. The artist does not scratch the surface of the plate, but instead exposes the metal underneath the ground. The plate is then submerged in an acid bath, and the acid eats into the exposed metal of the lines. This forms the incisions on the plate, known as the biting of the plate. The rest of the plate is protected by the acid-resistant ground. Afterwards, the ground is removed and the plate can be inked for printing. One of the benefits of etching is its ease of use for artists who are not professional printmakers and for artists skilled in drawing. Etching is often combined with aquatint or dry point two other intaglio methods. The Frugal Repast by Pablo Picasso is one of the artist's first forays into printmaking. Completed in 1904, Picasso pulled only a few impressions of this etching. Nearly a decade passed before the dealer Ambrose Vollard purchased the plate and steel-faced it to prevent it from wearing down while printing the edition. Vollard published the Frugal Repast in 1913 along with 14 other etchings and dry points. Altogether, the series is known as the Salton Banks or the Salton Banks Suite. It contains subjects that Picasso was preoccupied with at the time, including poverty, as well as itinerant acrobats, harlequins, and performers behind the scene. Here, a gaunt couple, whose forms are elongated, sit at a table partially covered by a wrinkled cloth on which is placed meager scraps of bread, a bottle of wine, an empty bowl, and two glasses. The still life is perhaps a reference to the sacraments, while the impoverished state of the two sitters directly relates to Picasso's life in this early point of his career. Isabel Bishop was born in Cincinnati and raised in Detroit. She moved to New York in 1918 at the age of 16 to study illustration. She soon became part of the loosely associated group called the 14th Street School, with Reginald Marsh, Raphael Sawyer, Kenneth Hayes Miller, and others. Her work is distinguished by her principal subject of women, and she is known for her images of shop girls and office workers. She made her first etching in 1925 and around this time abandoned commercial art and focused on figure compositions drawn from real life scenes in the city. In 1961, Bishop made a major change in her printmaking, employing aquatint and a different approach to the figure and its environment. In the works that followed this transition, Bishop distanced herself from the personality of the individuals she depicted, as seen here in Men and Women Walking. From the 1960s to the 1980s, Bishop produced etchings and paintings of such figures walking in the street. These compositions became more and more abstract, but never completely. Men and Women Walking is an aquatint a type of etching that creates areas of tone through using powdered resin sprinkled on the surface of the etching plate before it is submerged in the acid bath. When the plate is immersed in acid, the acid bites into the plate around the tiny resin particles. The particles of resin that protected the plate can be seen in this print as small irregular white dots in an effect similar to a grain. Darker and lighter tones can be achieved through leaving the plate in the acid bath for different lengths of time. Overall, aquatint can produce effects similar to watercolor or ink washes.
The works shown in this curatorial clip are just a few examples of intaglio prints. If you are interested in learning more about printmaking processes, I have included some resources to get you started. You can also visit the Freyland's online collection on our website and view more than 1,000 prints on the collection highlights page. I hope that you enjoyed this curatorial clip and we look forward to bringing you more.